welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Mighty Mini Arrow. Now, if you haven't seen the episode on the Mighty Mini Arrow, I got a great opportunity to join up with Phil Freybot and John Davis, otherwise known as Schizo, to go ahead and teach them how to build, how to fly, and they blew us away, and it was all around this one simple platform. Look for more episodes coming out with them in the future. So, if you don't know already, you can download free plans. We also have the speed build kit available as well. A couple things before you start that you're gonna wanna do, whether you're scratch building or building off the speed build kit, is get your power pod built and get your servo centered. Now, if you're using our electronic packs, these are the ES9051s, and it's important to use the smallest control horn to cut off the three extra legs, leaving the smallest leg on it. Now, for the power pod and the mighty minis, the most important thing is, when you build it, the A points towards the orientation of the motor. Now, since this is a pusher, it's gonna have no thrust angle. But if you're building other planes like the Little Mini Sportster, the Mustang, those are all gonna have a right angle, and the tip of the A is gonna point towards the side of the firewall. Unfortunately, on our minis, the firewalls are all a little bit different to meet up with it, but they all run off of the A or the F packs. And speaking of A and F packs, we do have electronics packs available. We'll give you the servos, the extensions, everything you need, minus your radio. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and get started. portion of the build we're going to show you how to build the right side of the flying wing. We're also going to show you how to cut out the reliefs for the center pod. So the great thing about flying the wings is there are really only two main components to build. In this case we're going to go ahead and start with one side of the wing. The other process is going to be the exact same. Before we go ahead and start doing our bevel cuts on the wing let's go ahead and build our spar first. For our spar we're going to go ahead and remove the foam here and here. Now before I go ahead and remove the foam I like to trace it over with a razor blade. This is gonna ensure that I get a nice clean cut. And don't go down through the paper. If you do cut through the paper, if you're scratch building, don't worry, just repair it with a piece of tape on the other side. Now we're gonna fold this over 180 degrees. And we're gonna use our fingernails and pull the paper away, revealing the cavity that we're gonna to use to fold the paper. Did everything right, it usually comes off in one nice clean sheet. If it doesn't, don't worry about that. Just go back and clean out that area. You want a nice clean cavity so you get a nice clean fold. Now there's some common build techniques with all of our models. And if you've already built your power pod, you already know what an A-fold is. A-fold is where the side cheeks go above the bottom plate. If you have any questions about that and you have a speed build kit, you can look at the indicator here. Now to make a proper A-fold, we're gonna go ahead and leave the side plates on the table. We're gonna apply our glue on the bottom of the side plates and then we're gonna fold it up to 90 degrees. If you don't have a 90 degree triangle, it'd be a good idea to get one, or you can use a roll of tape or something that's square. All right, starting about a half inch from the edge, we're gonna apply a nice bead of glue on the bottom of the side plate, and stop a half inch from the other edge. Place them flat on the table using as our friend. We're gonna rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees and press firmly against the table. The more square you can keep things through your build process, the better off you're gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this triangle over and make sure we keep a nice true 90 degree angle. All right, let's repeat the exact same process on the other side. Bead of glue, starting a half inch from the one edge, on the bottom of the side plate, ending a half inch from the other edge. This keeps the glue from squirting out and gluing to the building board. The cleaner and sharper you can make your edges, the better everything is gonna fit. All right, our spar is now complete. The last thing we wanna do before putting it to the side, take a razor, and knock off our little servo hole. We're gonna go ahead and put this aside now, and we're gonna put our attention towards the other wing half. So before we go on this wing half, I wanna explain a couple of indicator marks that you're gonna see on both the plans and the speed build kit. You're gonna have your score lines, and if you built a Versa wing or any other common plane, this is gonna be very familiar for you. But you're also gonna see these indicator lines here. What this is for is there's two ways you can build this wing. You can simply build this folded together and join it and not have that center section that you saw in the opening of the video. Or you can assemble the center section included in both the kit and the plans and actually have a cavity where your battery and or your FPV equipment can all stand inside. Now you're also gonna notice this little hatch right here. This is if you're making something without the nose and you need to have an area to access it, radio gear, you can do so right here. This is on both sides of the wing. If you wanna use this hatch, we're gonna cut this out at a later step. But before we do, we're gonna cut a double bevel here and a single bevel on the aileron. So this is gonna be the leading edge of our wing and with a nice sharp razor blade, not held at a 90 degree angle, but a very acute angle, we're gonna go ahead 
and let the edge of the blade rest just inside of the paper and with a light pulling motion towards us we're going to cut a single bevel. If your paper rips it means your razor blade's dull. This razor blade's been used quite a bit and I'm going to go ahead and change it out. Now that our one side bevel is done we're going to go ahead and put our tension on the other side. We're going to flip it 180 degrees, same process as before. Now if you're worried about this process, you can always go ahead and do this with a hard sanding block. While we're at it, let's go ahead and cut a single bevel on our back of our elevon. Now for this, we're going to put the bevel on the elevon side. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this off the table. Same process as before, make sure your fingers are nice and clear. There we are. You want to make sure that there's no resistance when you press it down. So we have a single bevel by our elevon and a double bevel on our leading edge. Now normally later on in the process I would say let's go back and reinforce this and work on our tails. Let's go ahead and take care of that opportunity right now while well, it's easy to work with. We're going to bury the tip of our hot glue and put a very thin ribbon of glue right down on our hinge line. Then we're going to go back with a just torn off piece of scrap foam and we're going to scrape it all out. You don't want to leave any excess hot glue, only what penetrates into the foam and the paper. And we'll sit back and let that dry. If you haven't done so already, let's go ahead and remove the little servo pocket from the wing. Now with the top surface of the wing staying on the ground, we want to apply a fold here to establish our leading edge curve. If we go ahead on here, it's going to go ahead and prematurely crinkle these areas and not give you a consistent curve. So we're going to keep this flat on the edge and with the flat palm of our hand, we're slowly going to rock this back and forth a couple times, letting it round off the leading edge, just like that. There we go. Now when we go back, we have a lot more curve to get a very sleek wing. Once you've done that and it curls over nicely, we can go ahead and put our attention on this area here. If you don't have any attention of using this pocket, this could be used very easily for FPV gear. It could be used for hooking up your lights, uh, anything you really want, and especially if you're not using the front nose area, um, this would be your area where you're going to put your receiver in um, and uh, make your connections. We're going to go ahead and cut this out here just so you can see how it looks. Now, if we delicately pop this through, the score cut should release, revealing a nice little hinge. Go ahead and smear a little bit of glue in here and reinforce this hinge so when we fold this over, it doesn't delaminate. It's very important whenever you do these reinforcements, you get all the excess glue off. If you leave excess glue on it, it's going to bind up. In this kit and on these plans, there's two different nose options. If you're slope soaring or don't like the look of the power pod and don't mind the battery being external, you can build the one on the top here. In this case, you're not going to need to do any further cuts on your wings. If you're going to build a lower one, at this point we're going to want to put our attention into our score lines, mainly the one on the top surface of the wing. And we're going to want to cut along that score line and then move on from there. You're going to notice it's not a perfectly straight line, but it actually has an arc. That's so when this folds up, everything is nice and straight and hard up against the center pod. Cut this relief. I'm going to save this little score cut for when I put the center pot on so I can trim it exactly. You'll see that shortly. Now that this is done, we're going to take a barbecue skewer and very, very lightly press into the score cut. Just going to open that up very, very minimal. Just to tell it where we really want it to crease and give it a little bit more encouragement. Now that that's been done, you're going to notice that this does not go all the way to the edge, but we're going to line up this box here and then keep it between the two score cuts, just like so. Once you're happy with the way that looks, I don't need to go all the way to the edge. Apply a little bit of glue. And once again, repeat that motion. Right back over the top servo cavity. If any of you all have built the uh, FT Sports tray, you're seeing that we use a different technique now for the servos, um, especially when we're doing a box bar, and that is to recess the servo slightly so only the control horn on the servo arm are sticking above the foam. Once that's dry, you can slowly fold this over and start giving the wing its shape. Now the goal, this goal is going to be when this folds over, that this box bar sits nice and flat against the bottom of the wing. Don't worry about this portion quite yet. We'll take care of that shortly. 
Once you're happy with that fold, it's not bending up the front too badly. We're gonna go ahead and with plenty of glue on our glue gun, we're gonna put the tip right into the crease and put a very minimal amount of glue along each seam. Now we're using the Atec Pro 200. If your hot glue gun can't deliver enough hot glue, go ahead and do this one score at a time and repeat this process until all the wings are done. Now, with the glue still hot, we're gonna fold this over and repeat the exact same motion that we just did. This time we're gonna press the trailing edge down against the bottom of the wing. Go ahead and give this about 30 seconds to dry. Once you've done that, you're gonna notice that the wing holds its shape very nicely. That's exactly what we want. Now that we're happy with the curl, we're gonna go ahead and kick out the bottom plate of the wing. And as straight as possible, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go ahead and cut off our excess spar material. Now this process will be the exact same if we fold this over, the spar would be coming right out to here and we'd just simply be cutting this area off. One common request we had from the Versa wing was that they didn't like that everything was exposed, so we really wanted to address that. And Phil and John Davis were really helpful through this process and to find out what they'd like to see, both as newbies and as experienced pilots in the RC uh, multi-rotor industry. All right, we're happy with that. Now's the time to make sure we have plenty of glue. And if anyone's keeping track, we still have not used a full glue stick yet. Uh, more glue does not mean more strength. So be strategic about that. Put it just where it's needed. If you have to practice on a scrap piece, go ahead and do so. We're gonna go ahead and apply a nice bit of glue here and on each edge of the spar. And then since the wing is so small on the trailing edge. Now, if your glue gun can't produce enough glue, go ahead and do just these three stripes and we'll go back to the trailing edge afterwards. All right. Once again, half inch from the edge, and then a half inch from the other edge. Right along the spars. Same principle applies. I always end it just a little bit from the edges and notches. And one nice little bead right at the very edge. All right, so I'm folding this down. I'm making sure my spar is nice and flat. And I'm putting my energy right on top of the spar and right at the very end of the trailing edge. So I'm making sure the trailing edge is flat against the table, the spar is flat against the bottom of the wing, and everything is held. Give this about a minute. Don't rush this process because if you release too early and it lasts go of the wing, you're going to change your airfoil. And that's going to affect how the plane flies. It's very important when this is thoroughly dried that the trailing edge is flat up against the top surface of the wing. Okay, at this point, this portion of the wing is now done, and what we need to do is we need to repeat the exact same processes and go back and build the other side. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to join two wings together and get it ready for the center power pod. So to join the wings, we're going to fold this on its back. Just like in many of our videos, we're going to only put tape on one half of the side, split right down the middle. There we are. Now we're folding up the one side. And then just go ahead and press this up even and flat as possible and let the pick tape fall on over. We're going to want this joint to be nice and tight because that's going to give us most of our strength. Now you can see here we have a really nice tape hinge. At this point, if you're building the version like a slope soil without the uh, center pot area, what you'd want is you'd have both surfaces here and they'd be able to meet right in the middle. In this step, we're only going to be putting glue on the bottom because this area is going to have the power pot. If you're building this without the center power pod, this area and this area would have glue, and when you join it and sit it down, it would stick together. So now would be the time to apply a nice generous amount of glue right down in that seam. You're going to want the glue to squeeze out just a little bit so we can smear it and make the joint even stronger. I'm going to use a scrap piece of foam here. Little side benefit, this also gives a nice rubbery texture for the battery to stick up against and also the power pod in the back. Give this plenty of time to allow it to dry thoroughly. Now would be a really good time to go ahead and cut this relief out. You're going to notice about one width of foam from the leading edge. And that's exactly how we want it. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and pop out these little pieces of foam. This is going to be where our power pod is going to key in. In this section of the build, we're going to show you how to build the center pod area that's going to house our battery, power pod, and electronics. To build the center portion of the power pod, we're going to remove the foam from this cavity here and here, and also remove the foam board here. Same process as before, just giving a light score so it opens up easier. And then rolling the foam out with your fingers. Now 
Now would be a really good time to just to give this a little rocking motion and pop out these tabs, these little access holes. This is going to be for servo leads to pass through and or lights or any other electronics that you need to put in the wings and get to the center section. Once again, we're going to be doing an A-fold on this. A-fold is where the side plates go above the bottom plate. And to get that A-fold, we're going to focus our glue predominantly on the bottom of the side plate. We're, then we're going to move the bottom plate to 90 degrees while holding the side plate firmly against the table. If you have any excess glue, go ahead and scrape it off now. Keep it light and strong. We're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Our last step in the center section is we're going to put a little bit of glue right where this paper is and maybe a little bit on the paper. Now don't push this down with your fingers or you're going to burn yourself. Use a scrap piece of foam, work this down 90 degrees, give it a couple seconds and go ahead and fold it the rest of the way back. And let the excess glue smear out holding it down. This is going to give a nice secure edge that won't delaminate when you open and close your hatch over and over. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to install the center pod into the main portion of the wing. The first step we're going to want to do for installing our center pod area is we're going to want to make sure this is going to be just a touch tight. And you notice it's not going to squeeze down very evenly. Go ahead and take a barbecue skewer or something that's nice and flat and rub it against the edge. If it's very tight, you can go back and trim it with a razor blade and true it up a little bit. If you're working off the speed belt kit, this should be the only real step you need to do to make it fit very nicely. Once you're happy with the fit, go ahead and do one final test before we glue it in. Now that we're happy with the fit, we're going to carefully remove it. and We're going to go ahead and focus our glue on the very bottom surfaces, not putting glue on the tabs. I'm going to pinch this in just a little bit so it goes down through this area. Line up the rear part of the center pod with the trail edge of the wing. And then get my tabs in and work it forward. Alright, once we're happy with that fit, give it about a good 30-40 seconds to dry before moving on. With the center pod firmly glued into the wing, we're going to go ahead and put a bead of glue on the top surface of the wing on both sides. What we do want to make sure though before doing that is that both portions of the trail edge are the same distance up. Sometimes when you push it down in, this can crush down and stay down. Make sure that they're up and even. I'm going to keep this area nice and clean, put a bead of glue, and then have a scrap piece of foam handy to scrape it off. Do one side at a time, and always make sure your wing stays nice and flat on the table. This joint is going to give you a tremendous amount of strength. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to install your servos, your push rods, and your control horns, and the reinforcements that keep it from flexing. A cool trick to put your servos in and guide the wires easily is take the excess material of your push rods on the straight end, and then bend a little U into it, like a hook. Let it be a little bit more closed than open. Now we can take our servos, and we can drop them down through our servo hole. You're going to notice there's two different staggered layers in there. It's just what we want. We can hook it. and pull it out. You can also allow gravity to do the job, it just takes a little bit longer. Now if everything is right, this should sit right down in for you, nice and neat. We're going to hold off glue on this till the very end. Let's go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the other side. With both of our servos in place but not glued yet, we're going to go ahead and put our attention towards the push rods. Now on a wing, the elevons are not perfectly flat, they're angled up just slightly. We have in our kit included a little gauge that you can use to give you that proper angle. With our servos nice and centered, we're going to go ahead and enter the Z-bend portion of our push rod through the servo. And with our control horn, we're going to open up the little cavity that's either on the plans or on our speedboat kit. Now this is where it's really important to always keep that little gauge handy. We're going to go ahead and keep that angle and we're going to mark the center with our fingernail. With it still attached to the servo, we're going to go ahead and bend it in 90 degrees. We're going to go back and check and make sure that that whole bend is right over top of our servo control horn. Neither the servo or the control horn has been glued in at this point, so we actually have a little bit of adjustment we can still make. In this case, I'm happy with the way it looks. I'm going to go ahead and grab this a couple millimeters in, about a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm going to bend it vertical. This is going to create what we call a modified Z-bend. A Z-bend is where when you lay it flat it looks like a Z, a modified is where it protrudes upwards. Nice thing about this 
is we can actually torsion the bar and then remove it from the control horn to do any repairs we may need. So we're going to go ahead and cut this area. And if you're conservative and you get this the first shot, you have enough extra push rod material to build a whole nother one. And if you have a speedboat kit and you have this extra hardware, save it. You can get a friend into the hobby with it. In this case, I won't turn this into a standard Z-Bend. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to bend it nice and flat. Now there's a reason I never removed it from the front end. That's so when we bend this, it keeps its orientation properly. If we remove this and try to bend it, oftentimes what will happen is this is not going to be 90 degrees to the other, other end. So let's go ahead and slide this on. Press it down into our cavity. And go back with our little gauge here. And make sure it's right. And that looks great. At this point we can lift this up. We can press this in. We go right back to our little gauge. And make sure the angle is where we want it. You don't want this to come loose in flight, so make sure this is nice and dry before you move on. Now that the control horn is nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and rock this up and bring the little tips of the servo just above. And since we're happy with it, I'm going to put a little drop, doesn't have to be huge, right underneath each flange of the servo. And then I'm going to press it right back into the cavity. And then as before, we're going to go back to our final gauge one last time. And if you don't like it, you can actually shift the servo back and forth, very minimal, and make it just perfect. You still may need a few clicks of trim depending on how the wing is built and balanced, but it's going to be very close right from the get-go. Our last step is to take our little zip tie here. And if you guys have ever built an FT Fly, this is going to be a very familiar step. This is going to be our little reinforcement for our push rod so it doesn't bow in midair. You don't want to get it so tight that it doesn't move, but you don't want to get it so loose that it's sloppy. So usually when you pull it just tight by hand, it's perfect. Now don't cut this blunt. Cut this like a little blade. Nice and sharp, but you notice I'm not cutting my wire. Now with our push rod staying nice and straight, just bowed up vertically, we're going to go right about to the middle of the wire, and we're going to press this down through, just like that. So now you're going to see as this moves, that holder is going to stay nice and tight. We want to glue this in so it doesn't bind up on us, so I'm going to remove it, put the tip of my nozzle right down in the hole we just created, a little drop of glue, lift up on my push rod, and set it right back down in the hole, making sure that the opening is perpendicular to the push rod passing through it. At this point, the servo, the control horns, and the push rods are all set up. The next step is to repeat the exact same process on the other side. In this portion of the build, we're going to show you how to install the power pod and put in our electronics and get all the controls functioning the right way and in the right throws. Before I install the power pod into the center pod of the flying wing, we're going to make sure that the motor is spinning in the right direction. Now you can run either reverse prop or standard props in this, but always make sure that's producing thrust pointing back towards the spinner, and always make sure that your numbers are pointing towards the nose. Everything is working good on here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this, and I'm going to pass this on through. Now your power pod is removable, so you can swap it from one plane to the other. Just keep in mind some designs do have a thrust angle designed into it, and this one does not. So I'm going to go ahead and snug fit this in, just like that. Now in our kit we do have barbecue skewers. You can choose to slide a skewer through if you want, or you can let the friction fit do the work for you. This has a nice friction fit, and it's always pushing so it's not going to pop out. If it's loose or you're not happy with it, pass a barbecue skewer right on through. Every receiver is different, so always make sure you consult your manual. But this follows the exact same pattern in the Spectrum. This is our Graupner GR12, so a throttle, aileron, elevator are what we're going to be working with. Here's our throttle linkage. The ground is on the top, so we're going to make sure it looks just like this. We're going to pass it down through and plug it in. Now there's really no rhyme or reason to which one goes in which, but if one of the servo or control surfaces are reversed and the other one is perfect, swap out your two connections. If both your controls are reversed, then go ahead and just go through your transmitter and reverse both controls. So let's go and plug it in this way. We'll power it up. As you can see, we have no prop on it. It's really important that you don't put your prop on for safety. All right, so I plugged this in. And we're going to go ahead. I got a little bit of trimming and adjusting to do. But you can see when I pull back on the stick, the elevons go down. That is wrong. When I pull right, it goes left. That is wrong. So in this case, all I need to do is go into channel 2 and 3 and reverse them. Now when I pull back on the sticks, the yellow bonds rise, and when I push right, 
the right elevon raises. That's exactly what we want. At this point, if there's any sub trimming we need to do, we'll go ahead and do that now. And let's go ahead and get our throws dialed in. We're gonna go ahead and use our throw gauge to make sure that we have the throws that we want. Now this is our high angle. We wanna make sure that it goes right up and meets it. At this point, our controls are dialed in, everything is running the right direction. We're gonna disconnect our batteries and we're gonna put on our front nose. In this step of the build, we're gonna show you how to put the nose cover plate on and also make your hatch. Now when installing the nose, you have two different options. This is a really great small FPV platform. And for that, we put two different nose options. They're both identical, except one has a nice oval cutout for a small board camera that you can use. Uh, we use the uh, 650 TVL Lumineer board camera that goes from anywhere from five volts all the way up to, uh, to 20 plus. So uh, that's a really good camera. It fits right into the nose and pops out just far enough to give you total clear view, but not get damaged in case you nose it in. If you're not using a board camera, you can use this portion here, and that has no hole, and the uh, battery goes right up into the front of the nose. Let's go ahead and do the one with the board camera. So as before, we're gonna be removing some foam. This case, it's gonna be here, 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 and we're gonna remove the paper right here. Light little score on both sides. Also, we can do it here, here. By now, you guys should be a pro at moving, removing foam. This is a common technique used through all, I think, 30 plus of our designs. Okay, this here is going to be your C fold. And for a C fold, we're going to go ahead and fold this right over so it looks just like this. To do a C fold, we're going to put a little glue on the paper. Keep in mind the paper is going to be super hot, so you're going to want to use the table. We're going to fold this down, fold this over, and then we're going to press it all up against the table nice and hard. Careful not to glue your fingers to the piece. Go back and wipe off that excess. There we are. All right, so let's go ahead and put our attention to the front here. This is gonna actually bend around and protrude down the bottom. We're gonna cut it flush. So we're gonna wanna establish a nice gradual curve right around where this oval is. If you're doing the one without the circle cut into it, it's the same process. Just put most of your curve right at this portion. And what we're doing is we're copying the angle here so the foam doesn't have to work as hard. We have our curve established, so our next step is going to be that we're going to go ahead and test fit this down. Now keep in mind this is kind of under pressure, so it's a good idea to take a barbecue skewer, kind of round these edges a little bit to make everything go in a little bit neater. We're going to go actually where the hatch is first, we're going to press this down in, and we'll work our way forward. If it's really tight, in this case which this one is, we'll even go ahead and put a nice little round here. We want this to be nice and snug. It's only gonna get looser with time. So first step we're gonna do is we're gonna press down our hatch into its position, and we're gonna make sure that this portion here is nice and flush. And then with the front of the nose hanging off the table, we're gonna slowly work this around and let it protrude down through the bottom. Once we're happy with the way everything looks and feels, we're only gonna be putting glue on the portion that's not gonna be the hatch. So in that case, everything forward of where we remove the foam. So here, in here. We want it to squeeze out just a little bit. Be careful you don't burn your hands. Same process as before. Lock it down. And slowly bend that over. Let the glue into your wing. That's nice and dry, but we haven't put any glue here. We're going to go ahead and lay this flat up against the table. And with our razor blade, we're only going to cut through the foam portion. Now we're going to bend this back 180 degrees. And then we're going to remove that extra foam. This should leave us a nice piece of paper where when we smear the glue down in, we can fold this back and get a nice seal. We're gonna put a little bit of glue down in that crack. And we're gonna use a scrap piece of foam, press this down, and fold it on over. Now we haven't addressed yet our little hatch here. We wanna make this stronger. So just like we do with other hatches, we're gonna smear a little bit of glue here, but we're also gonna reinforce on both sides here and here with a scrap piece of foam. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of glue down here. Scrap piece of foam to scrape up the excess. All we're doing is getting that glue to walk over the foam, the paper, and then back on the other side of the foam. And while we're holding that to dry, we'll put a nice gentle bead of glue here. Understand we're gonna be scraping 90% of it off here. Gives you a good reason to leave all your scraps close by. 
Now we're just going to scrape off the excess on this side. I'm going to grab a new piece. Scrape off the excess on this side. Oops. With our hatch still open, I ripped off a little tiny piece of tape, about two inches long. I'm going to fold over the top portion of it here. I'm going to go ahead and apply that, leaving this little tiny tail to stick up. It's going to give us the ability when we press this down, we don't have to dig out of the foam, we can just simply pull this tab up and access our battery and all of our electronics. Now, this portion of the foam here is only one thickness thick, this is two. I'm going to go back here, and if we don't like it, we can always scrape this off, but I'm going to put a little tiny dab of glue on the very bottom lip right here. Not building up too high and making sure it definitely doesn't go over the halfway mark. What those two little drops of glue are going to do is you're going to actually, when they push down through here, it's going to kind of resist this and then it's going to pop underneath and kind of act as a support tab. This is a real helpful trick that you guys can do on many other your hatch designs. It just takes the right amount of glue. If you're not happy with it, just scrape it off. It's only attached to the tape. Now when you push this down, you're going to have a little bit of resistance and it'll be nice and strong. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to apply your wing tips to the wing and also we're going to show you a couple different mods you can do to make it stronger. Now before I put the wing plates on, I'm going to go ahead and address a couple things and I also want to give you guys a tip. Uh, as all of you guys know, if you fly, you crash. Uh, if you want to keep this thing protected and you don't want a little bit extra weight and possibly having to shift your battery a little bit more forward, you can take something like a very light paint stick and adhere it right at the very bottom here and then tape back over it. It's going to do a couple different things. It's going to give you a nice skid plate, but also, God forbid, when you run straight into the ground, it's going to keep that nose from crumbling in, protect your camera, protect your gear, and distribute the weight all the way through the back. So that's just something if you want to do, just keep in mind, we're trying to keep this under 0.55 pounds just for general non-FPV flying. Um, if you want to keep it light, you're going to probably have to lose this step and keep everything uh, minimal. Since we don't have any FPV gear in our little hatches here, I'm going to go ahead and tape those down now. We don't want them opening up during flight. Simple little strip of tape on both sides. And rather than trying to pull this off, what I do is I just simply cut this and then retape it with another piece of tape over top of it. You shouldn't really have to access this area too much. And if you do, so like say you're doing a slope soar, go ahead and make this where it's taped on both sides and then you have a piece of tape that can rip off easily. For our wing tips, you're going to notice we're not going to want to cut on this bottom surface here. We're only going to want to remove the surface from the top to meet up and be per, uh, parallel with the bottom surface. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom as a guide. And I'm not going to try to do it in one swoop cut. I'm going to lay it nice and flat and I'm just going to go over it again and again until I go all the way through. And I can even turn this back around, try to get it for the camera here, and use a solid motion to make it nice and flat. You're going to see on the edge of your uh, wing plates that there's a little line. That line's going to be the bottom reference guide to line up. I like to keep this just on the surface and glue this just so that bottom line is there. What you want is you want your wing tips to be perpendicular to the bottom surface of your wing and also be flush on the top. I'm going to go ahead and apply a nice bead of glue here. Keep in mind not to put any glue on my elevons. Bead of glue here. Going back to my little reference line right there. Slide this so it lines up, and I make the tip of this plate right on the edge. You can move this forward if you want. I notice when I do ribbon cuts and things like that, oftentimes if I leave it forward, it'll snag it, and that causes me some problems when I'm doing combat. If you want to make this even stronger, follow up with a bead of glue on both sides, and then smear it loose just like you did on your center section. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. So now is the time to put the prop and the battery in, and I cannot stress enough with a flying wing how important CG is. So we'll go through that here. First thing we're going to do is the prop. Now with the prop, it's very easy to get confused because normally on a tractor style airplane, the numbers go closer to the spinner. In this case, and on any case that you're flying, the numbers of the prop are always going to be on the front surface of the prop, and they're always going to face forward. So the direction the plane is going to be flying, that's the direction your numbers are going to go. If your motor sounds really funny and it's really inefficient, most likely have your prop on backwards. So we're going to go ahead and slide that on. Oop, I lost my little prop collar. If any of you guys ever wonder what these little donuts are for, these are your little precision collars that make your prop fit in nice and tight. Now on a pusher prop, it's a little bit more difficult because they want to pop out when you pass it through. Let's go ahead and sit that in there and push it in. There we go. I'm running the F pack on this right now, but you could also run the A and have a very nice docile trainer with still a little bit of speed. 
you can run it on two or three cell setup. There we are, nice and tight, spinning in the right direction. Let's go ahead and install our battery. One thing we're moving for, especially moving with uh, working with more schools and kids and groups, uh, is we're moving to XT30s. XT30 is a fairly new connector. It's a smaller version of the XT60. The nice thing is that this wire can handle up to 30 amps, and it's near impossible to plug in backwards or to damage. So look for us in the near future to switch over to XT30s, but don't worry, if you have a lot of JST's products, we're also going to have the adapters available in both the electronic kits and also separately. All right, we're going to pass this through. You're going to notice the battery friction fits very nicely. If you want to put a little Velcro in, you're welcome to. Because I have no board camera in this, I'm automatically going to push this mostly up towards the nose. If you wonder, there's two little dots on the bottom of your wing. Those little dots are going to be your balance points. We're going to put our fingers on there. And what we want is we want to see our wing balance nice and level, if not a little bit nose forward. Now speaking of balance, a lot of people may wonder why this design is the way it is. What we wanted to do is we wanted to design this so we could take something like a Mobius or these new run cams and we can put them flat on the top and not have to worry about seeing the nose. So if you're going to mount a Mobius or a run cam, easiest thing to do is put a little Velcro or pass a barbecue skewer on through and then rubber band it on down. That way you can have your board camera, you can have your recording camera, but keep in mind if you have that you're most likely going to have to shift your battery back a little bit further. If you have to ship your battery back a lot, put your receiver inside the spar of the wing. All right, everything looks good. Our next step is to take it out and maiden it. All right, our FT Mighty Mini Arrow is ready for its maiden here. A couple things before you launch. If you've never maiden something before, check out our video below. Six quick tips for a successful first flight. It gives you tips like flying to the wind, um, battery balance, all things hopefully you've done before. It's just a nice little checklist to make sure that you're ready to go. Uh, in this case, we're ready to go into the wind. Our batteries are charged. Let's go ahead and put it in the air and see what happens. All right. I don't know if we mentioned this in the build video, but this is predominantly made to be a race wing. All right. Go ahead and trim this out. I'm gonna throw out the low rates here. I owe a big thank you to both John and Phil Freybot. Uh, they were instrumental in helping me develop this and just a blast to work with. So look for them in future build videos. They are avid uh, wing enthusiasts now, along with amazing multi-rotor pilots. Go put it in for landing. There we are. <laughs> Friends, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you, if you haven't ever tried scratch building, flying wings are amazing. If you don't like something this size, we also have the Versa wing that was designed many years ago. There's thousands of them flying today. The free plans, the build video, and of course the speed build kit are now available. If there's anything additionally you want to see, let us know. We'll make a video to supplement it. See you next time.